Amen. So good to see everybody. <clears throat> I want to talk to you briefly this morning about the Holy Spirit. I, we, we, we talked last week in the title of the series is Empowered. And in a world that we live in, a lot of people crave power. And uh, we're in a, in a place right now where we are getting ready to vote. Uh, early voting has started. How many knew that? And uh, so what I want to say to you as a church is that um, God expects the church to speak up in the voting booth. And if the church doesn't speak up, somebody else is going to. And the morals of our nation will go downhill if the church is silent. The, the devil brought this up. The devil said that, I mean, <clears throat> don't you think? He said, two things you don't want to talk about is religion and politics. And I think, and this is just me talking, in case you were wondering who's preaching this morning. I think if we ever needed to talk about religion and politics, we need it now. <laughs> we, you know, we don't have to go along with, the, the, with, with what everybody says. My daddy said this. He said any dead fish can float downstream. Amen. But it takes a live fish to go against the current. And m I, one of the core values that I've adopted in my life is that the church is the only hope for America. This church, the church of the living God is the only hope for America because that's the only thing that God will bless when America has the morals of God in their legislation, then God will bless that nation. And it says the nation that forgets God will surely die. We better remember God and remember his word and speak up as his church for him because he doesn't have another plan. He doesn't have a plan B. He expects us, the church, to rise up. Yeah. So I'm just going to go ahead and tell you who to vote for. All right. That's all right. The reason is because I'm not running for anything and I'm not running from anything. We ain't scared. Vote for for the candidate that will stand up and speak up for the morals of God's word. That's who you need to vote for. Amen. Those who stand up for life. Uh, we have a culture today that wants to support. Uh, uh, to, nobody wants to speak up for the unborn child, but those who know God and know life, that he's about life, knows that we need to stand up for them and God help those who vote for people who are in favor of abortion. Because that, that, that is, uh, death is something that God is not about. He's all about life and he's about goodness. And we have a lot of agendas that are go against the moral truth of God's word. And we need to stand up for the, for the moral truth fiber of our nation. Amen. And that is a commercial that has been, it, it does represent the feelings of the Lone Star Cowboy Church, and you can just go to the bank on it. <laughs> we, don't have to, we don't have to apologize for that. Amen. Empowered. How I many could use a little, little bit of help this morning living for the Lord? Just need a little bit more help in your life. I know you do because that's why you come to church. Uh, the Holy Spirit, the helper. Uh, if you have your Bibles, turn to John chapter 14, verse 26. John chapter 14, verse 26. It's, it's a scripture we talked a little bit about last week as well. There was a church council that they met, and they discussed the, the pastor's compensation, and they said to the pastor in the meeting, they said, we're sorry, pastor, but we're not going to be able to give you a raise this year. And the pastor, he said, oh, but you have to give me a raise because I'm but a poor preacher. And the leader of the council said, we know, we've been hearing you preach for a year now. And... <laughs> poor preacher. All right. The truth is we all need help. Amen? 
we all need, even the preacher needs help. We all need help, and that's the reason God sent the Holy Spirit. Listen to this. It says, but the helper, everybody say the helper. The helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. This is Jesus talking. He said, he will teach you all things. He didn't say he would teach you some things. He said he will teach you all things because when he says all things, he means that everything that is good and everything that we need to know comes from him. He said he'll teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. Now, the disciples, they had followed Jesus. They, they followed him when he healed the blind men. They followed him when, when he raised the dead. They followed him through the shores of Galilee as, he, as his footprints. He not, they walked with him, and, and when they, they go fishing, they was with him when he calmed the seas. The disciples spent time with Jesus, and they spent so much time with him. And then Jesus comes along, and he says that these days are going to come to an end, and <clears throat> Soon he was arrested, and then he was beaten, and he was crucified, and he was buried. And although he rose from the grave, his time on earth after the resurrection was short, and now he was gone. No longer could they see him face to face. No longer could they look at him and say, but Jesus, what about this? What's going to happen here as they would before when he was walking with them? And then Jesus says this, the helper, the Holy Spirit, who I will send whom the Father will send in my name will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. And then in John chapter 16, verse 7, it says, but I tell you the truth. Listen to this. He said, it is to your advantage. He's, it's to your advantage, Jesus said, that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. John 14, 26, the Greek word here with the helper is translated parakletos or paraclete. And this is, and, and if you'll go to uh, uh, Bible Gateway, there's a lot of different translations, a lot of different versions of the Bible. And, and a lot of people, they're like, man, I don't know what to do about this. But really what's happened is, is that a lot of people have gone into the Hebrew Greek and they've given their their uh, definition of the Hebrew words, which is, which is in the Old Testament, the Greek, which is in the New Testament, and, and, and the different versions is their uh, interpretation of those words. Now, what, what I want to say is that over a period of time, words change their meaning. And because the words, and people, I've heard people say, well, why well, well, I like the King James Version because that's the version that Jesus used. Well, the King James didn't show up till the 1500s, 15 B A.D. I get my A.D.s and my B.C.s wrong. A.D. after death, and so Jesus didn't use that. He was it. He was. He did the 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 Greek actually, and but. Whenever they use these different versions and translations, it's for our benefit. But it, I have what we call a Hebrew-Greek study Bible, and it's, a, it's really Greek by number, and it gives you a number. Whenever it's talking in, in the Scripture, it gives you a number, and you can go back to that number, and you can tell what that word actually means. And you can go to the expanded Bible, which expands the word, the specific word itself. So I looked at this, and the, the word paraclete, in the New American Standard Bible is translated helper. And in the King James translations, it translates this word as the comforter. The Holy Spirit is the helper. He's the comforter. The New International Version translation says he is the counselor. The New Revised Standard translation says he is our advocate. The Message Bible says he is our friend. And really... I don't personally have any problem with any of these translations because all of these translations show us the deep working of the Holy Spirit. You can't describe God, the Holy Spirit, in one word unless it's love. 
I find no problem with it, but he is my comforter. When I'm going through times of sorrow, yesterday we had a funeral service for uh, Reverend Devereaux, a pastor of the, the, uh, the uh, Baptist church in, in uh, Dacus, and he'd been a pastor for over 50 years. I've been over there and, and preached at his church uh, at the anniversary service for probably the last five or six years. And uh, just a great pastor, a loving man and a giving man. And he went on to be with the Lord. He's about 90 some years old. But we had a memorial service for him here yesterday. And the Holy Spirit was here because God had blessed him. It was a home going experience for him. And it says if he said that, that he would never leave us, that he would comfort us and, and be with us. Then it says that he is our comforter, our counselor. When I'm confused and I need some help, I need someone to guide me, I need counsel. Anybody could use a counselor this morning, somebody to help you. I, I would just say this in the most humble way I know how. You need a counselor. <laughs> you need counseling because the Holy Spirit will help you in things that you don't understand and help you, guide you, and direct you, give you words of counsel. He said, he is my advocate. When I've, when I've been accused and need someone to stand beside me, the Holy Spirit is my advocate. The Bible says, listen to this. It says, when we sin, we have an advocate with the Father. It's not like Jesus is just waiting for you to sin so he can hit you over the head with a ball peen hammer and send you to hell. That's not the way he works. He's an advocate. He is your cheerleader. He wants to help you to run the race in, with faithfulness to him. He is your advocate. He stands up for you. So when we sin, we can go back to God and say, God, please forgive me. I'm sorry. I was wrong. And he will help you and he will forgive you. He is your advocate. He is on your side. He believes in you. That's God, the Holy Spirit. I don't know how you can sit still when I'm telling you something so good. An advocate. Who needs an advocate? He is my friend. Whenever other people let me down, when other people uh, talk ugly about him, other people have issues with me, he's going to be a friend. The scripture says it sticks even closer than a brother. He is our friend, the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Is our helper in times of trouble. I'm thankful that he is our helper. So in verse 26, the Holy Spirit is there to instruct us or to teach us in our understanding with our walk with him. And then number two, he is there to remind us, to bring to remembrance all of the things that we've forgotten that Jesus did for us through the word of God. Even the disciples called him rabbi, which means teacher. But he said, I will send the Holy Spirit who will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance what I've said. The Holy Spirit unravels all mysteries. Uh, no one learns anything correctly unless he is taught by the Holy Spirit, the helper. I've had people come up to me from time to time and they say, Preacher, that's the best sermon I've ever heard. And then they say this. When you said such and such, that really got to me and it really spoke, it really spoke to my heart. And a lot of times they'll say, when you said this, and then they tell me what I said, and in my mind, I know I didn't say it. <laughs> but what happened was, was that between my mouth and their ears, the Holy Spirit took these words and he made, he spoke into their spirit and spoke into their heart the words that they needed to hear so that the Holy Spirit could change their life. We serve a miraculous God who knows exactly what we need, when we need it, how we need it. And when he has it for us, he has it for us with love and compassion. And he wants to build you up in your most holy faith. He wants to set you aside for a purpose for his purpose and it comes through the power of the Holy Spirit excuse me <laughs> ran into my thing here I just get excited the spirit of truth comes he will guide you into all truth the scripture says for he will not speak on his own initiative but what, whatever he hears he will speak and he will disclose to you what is to come and he will glorify me for he will take he will take of mine and disclose it to you. John 16, 13 through 14. No one can truly know Jesus 
unless he's, taught, unless he's taught by the Holy Spirit. If you can read the Bible forward and backward, but unless the Spirit teaches you how to apply the Word of God, it will be read in vain. It's the Holy Spirit of God who will disclose to us what is to come. It's the Spirit of truth that will glorify Christ in us. It's the Holy Spirit who will reveal the deep things of Christ in himself. He is our comforter, our counselor, our advocate, our helper. In the short time I have left, I want to run through five characteristics of the Holy Spirit, our helper. First of all, he is a loving helper. God loves us. The Bible says God is love. Because God is love, the Holy Spirit is love. And whenever the Holy Spirit convicts us, he convicts us because he loves us. When he helps us, he helps us because he loves us. His motivation is always because he loves us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him. And then Jesus comes along and says, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, the comforter, your advocate. The second thing is the Holy Spirit is a faithful helper. Love in this world sometimes can prove to be unfaithful. Anybody ever uh, have fallen in love with somebody and then they messed you around? The Holy Spirit will love you through anything and everything, and he will be your friend that will stick closer to you than a brother. He is faithful. There's a big burly man, and he came to the care pastor of a good-sized church, and and uh, the care pastor, she was known for her charitable impulses. And the guy says, ma'am, he says, I wish to draw your attention to the terrible plight of a poor family in our town. And the father is dead and the mother's too sick to work. And they have nine children and, and they're all hungry. And they're about to get turned out in the cold on the empty streets unless someone pays their rent, which is $800. And the care pastor, she says, how terrible uh, she said, may I ask who you are? And the big old burly guy said, well, and he started to cry. He says, I'm, I'm their landlord. <laughs> it's interesting to me how everybody else wants everybody else to help. Everybody else to do something. They, oh, the church needs to do this, or somebody else needs it. We need to, we need to call welfare. We need to. Do no, listen. It's about time the church stood up and helped people. Amen. Because that's who, what the Holy Spirit has done for us. We need to be. And from the very beginning of time, we've always wanted this church to be labeled a giving church, not a taking church. Because Jesus gave and He loved. We should be willing to give and love. Like Jesus. He said he'd never forsake us. He said, the Lord, is, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do to me. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you if we confess our sin. He is. If, everybody say if. If we confess our sin, who is faithful? He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You see, God is faithful. He is faithful. And because God sows the seeds of faithfulness into us, we can be faithful to him. We can be faithful to each other. We can be faithful in our marriage. We can be faithful to our kids. We can be faithful in our job. We can show up on time. We can give an honest day's wages for an honest day's work. We can be faithful because he's been faithful to us. Can you say amen to that? He is faithful. The Holy Spirit is a wise helper. I've been reading in my devotions about Job. Anybody ever read the book of Job? It's like he, he had some so-called friends. And then he says this in Job chapter 16 too. He said, sorry comforters are you all. <laughs> yeah, y'all a bunch of sorry comforters. You ain't helping at all. Aren't you glad the Holy Spirit isn't a sorry comforter? The Holy Spirit wants to edify you and build you up in the faith that he's given you. And nobody will cheer you on like the Holy Spirit. Oh, this is good, I, this is good, good stuff. Sorry comforters. They came to give him a prescription for healing, but it turned out to be the wrong prescription. 
Rather than providing healing, it just hurt. When the Holy Spirit comes, he comes with wisdom, he comes to edify, and he comes to build up. The Holy Spirit, number four, is an active helper. He, just, he doesn't say, just say, be warmed and be filled. He actually moves and to help, helps us. He comforts us. The Holy Spirit gives us understanding. He gives us promises. He gives us grace. He gives us comfort. He gives us help. And he helps us build relationship with the Father. Helps us build relationships with each other. Romans 8, 15 says this, For you have not received the spirit of slavery leading to fear again, but you have received a spirit of adoptions as sons we, by which we cry out, Abba, Father. We have a heavenly Father that loves us. I'm so thankful for that. He is the spirit of wisdom. He's the spirit of understanding. He's the counselor. He's the spirit of strength. And the fifth point is that the Holy Spirit is ever-present helper. He said he would never leave us, he'd never forsake us. He'd be a friend that sticks closer than the brother. Here's the truth of the matter. If you've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, God the Holy Spirit is always near you. When you're distressed, God is there. When you get depressed, God is there. He is an ever-present help in the time of trouble. He will never leave you, never forsake you. His love is always pointed in your direction because God is on your side, and he wants you to succeed in life. Here's what the apostle Paul said. He said, for I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, or things present, or things to come, nor powers, heights, or depths, nor any other created thing will be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God. That's a good sermon. It's not really a shouting sermon, but it's a good sermon. <coughs> Here's what the... The scripture, the scripture says, grieve not the Holy Spirit. Grieve not the Holy Spirit. And the only way that we can actually grieve the Holy Spirit is when we reject the Holy Spirit. Because like, if you were to grieve me, you would say, Randy, I don't want to have nothing to do with you. That would bring grief to me, right? So when we accept the Holy Spirit into our lives, when we accept everything that the Holy Spirit of God has for us, we please the Holy Spirit. I just want to challenge you this morning. The gift that God has given to all of us, the Holy Spirit, is here to help us to walk through a life that sometimes has struggles, sometimes we have issues in our life, sometimes we don't know what the answer to the problem is, but God is not the author of confusion. He is the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He despised the shame of the cross, but he looked ahead in time and he saw you and me on on uh, February the 25th or whatever it is today, 2018, he knew you'd be in church. He knew that those people would be watching online. And he said, I will have a plan for you. I will send the comforter. And he will be there for you. Accept him and the work that he has for you. And here's the other thing it said. And I just want to throw this out at you. He says, when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you shall be witnesses. He said, if you have the Holy Spirit, you'll be a witness. He didn't say you will do witnessing. <laughs> Y'all ain't buying what I'm selling. He said, you will just be a witness for me. Now, let me ask you this. Is there anybody here today that the Lord has done anything for you? Raise your hand if the Lord's done anything for you. So your story is the, is the story that you know best. Nobody knows your story better than you know your story. And what he's saying to you is to share your story with other people so that they will know who God is to you. And because you have been edified by the Holy Spirit, you will be edifying other people by blessing them with the story of what God's done for you. Yes. 
Now the devil would tell you that you're not good enough to do that. Y'all come on with me. Well, I, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not really that far along in the Lord yet. Well, it's just like politics and religion. If, if the devil can keep you quiet, your friends and your neighbors won't know about Jesus because God doesn't have a plan B for your friends and your neighbors. He expects you to speak up because you are the only plan that God has for your friends and your neighbors. I like that. I'm excited about our future here. Our community's growing. There's a lot of people that need Jesus. Amen. And all we got to do is keep showing up and inviting people and helping them to come. You shall be witnesses when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for loving us this morning. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us. We're so honored, Lord, that you would send the Holy Spirit to us to live with us and in us, oh God. We don't understand so many things about who you are, but we understand, oh God, that nobody can love us like you do. Holy Spirit, I thank you for your presence that we feel in this room this morning. We pray your blessings upon your people. Help us, Lord. Not to grieve you, Lord, but to be faithful to you and to be who you've called us to be. We thank you for it, in Jesus' name. I'd like for you to keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed for just a second. Scripture says that we've all sinned and we've all come short of the glory of God. There's not anybody in this building, including myself, all the pastors. We've all sinned. We've all come short of the glory of God. But the Scripture says if we confess our sin. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This morning, if you've never invited Christ to come into your heart, or maybe if you have and you just haven't been living for him, simply by raising your hand, say, Preacher, I need Jesus in my life. I need to make him the Lord of my life. We want to put a Bible in your hand. Anybody? Preacher, that's me. I need Jesus in my heart. I need him in my life. Slip your hand up high. Anybody? Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. Bless you. Anybody else? Preacher, that's me. Yep, back there in the back. I'm going to put a Bible in your hand, partner. Thank you so much. Something, something about just being honest before God, that God just, he honors that. Anybody else? Preacher, that's me. Anybody else? If you raised your hand, would you mind looking up at me? Would you mind coming up and let me pray with you back in the back? Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. This is a good day. It's a good day to get things right. So proud of you guys. <clears throat> so happy for you. It's a good day. I'm proud of you, buddy. Tell me your name. Robert. Robert, bless you, buddy. Thank you. I'm proud of you. It's, a, it's the best thing you ever did in your life right here. This is, there's eight, two things. This guy here, God's all over this guy right here. Love you, buddy. Proud of you. This is, this is like the greatest privilege that we could ever have is to have God with us. And uh, I want to help you to pray. Bible says if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God's raised you from the dead that we'll be saved and a lot of people they say well why is Christianity the true religion the reason is it's because Jesus overcame death Buddha Muhammad none of them boys Jesus did that's why he's real because he is the resurrection and because of that, we can have eternal life. It's not just being able to have a relationship with him now. We can spend eternity with him. That's why it's such a wise decision. So what I want to do, I want to help you pray. And you believe in your hearts, okay? Y'all help us pray. Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus thank, you for loving me. thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for dying on the cross. 
for my sins. For my sins. Lord, I am a sinner. I am a sinner. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. I invite you into my heart. I invite you into my heart. I invite you into my life. I invite you into my life. From this day forward. From this day forward. I give my life to you. I give my life to you. Help me to read my Bible. I read my Bible. To pray. To pray. Show up for church. Show up for church. And get baptized. And get baptized. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Teach me to love you more. Teach me to love you more. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Now look here. I'm going to say this to you. Just like your physical body needs maintenance, your spiritual self needs maintenance too. And you do that by feeding on the Word of God. We'll help you do it around here. you got to keep showing up. But, but get in that Bible and read that Bible. Let him teach you. Just like what I preached all the morning about, about letting the Holy Spirit teach you. But you got to show up. Sometimes that's going to be the biggest battle. Because when you sin, or if you sin, you can have a choice. You can either run from God, or you can run back to God. I think you all know the right answer there. Yes, sir. Always run to him. The devil will try to lie to you and tell you you're not good enough. But God says you are good enough because you are part of his family now. Don't let ever, anybody ever take that away from you. Is that a deal? Yeah. Oh, buddy, I'm proud of you. Go visit these people for a second. Bless you, buddy. Stand with me, please. Man, that makes me happy. The Bible says when this happens that the angels in heaven rejoice. Could we just rejoice with them for just a second? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So I want to challenge you all this week to be witnesses. And here's what's going to happen. I'm just going to tell you what your week's going to look like here for a second. Somebody's going to come across your path throughout your week and the Holy Spirit's going to speak to you and he's going to say talk to those people invite them to church or you can talk to them but but it's going to happen and when it happens I just want to see by hands how many will say preacher I'll invite them to church I'll tell them that I, I love Jesus and I want to see them come to heaven yeah I'm excited we can change this world we can change this world because the Holy Spirit of God lives inside of us. Amen. So I want to pray for you. Lord, give these people your boldness. Let's raise both hands up. Lord, give us your boldness, I pray. I pray, Lord, that you would just have your way in our hearts, our minds, our bodies, and our souls. And Lord, I pray that you would instill that love in us. Again, refresh us with that fresh anointing with a fresh love for people, a fresh love for you, oh God, that as we go through this week, oh God, that we would not be intimidated, manipulated, or controlled by the things of this world, but we would be controlled by you, Holy Spirit, because we give you full reign of our lives. We are not our own. We've been bought with a price, and we trust you with us, and with our words, and with our heart. In Jesus' name, and the church said, amen. amen. Now, hold on. We're going to have some people get baptized here in a minute we're going to dismiss our people that getting baptized that need to change your clothes and y'all go out there in that world and you make a difference we got our prayer team up here if you need prayer we love y'all god bless you <coughs> i just want to say to everybody online thank you for watching online thank you for being here with our church service, I want you to know that you all are very special to us. And I just pray that God will bless you and your family. Just want to encourage you to find some friends and neighbors some family members to come and, and share church with you. Maybe you can cook them breakfast or something. But please come and, and be a part of the church service. Uh, we thank you. We love you. Thank you for watching online. We love you guys. Bless you. Amen.